All right, 6.7, we're going to be going over a familiar topic, uh, Pythagorean Theorem. Um, I think many people know this even if they're not great at math. Okay, so we're going to be doing a few things. We're going to be approximating some square roots, and we're going to be applying Pythagorean Theorem. So they give you a table of some perfect squares, 1 through 20. Maybe good to have this, and I think you can print it out. I might try to do that for you. Um, you can commit some of these to memory. But just being familiar with many of them will help speed up the process. So you have this in the book. Um, they want you to know the terminology. When you see this square root symbol, it's called a radical sign, uh, sometimes called a radicand. And um, we want to complete the expression to of the radical or radicand. Um, it's finding out what number do you multiply times itself, which is a perfect square. Uh, to get that number. So they show you some of the, the perfect squares from 1 to 400, all of them. So 1 up to 20 are corresponding to the perfect square here, squares of whole numbers from 1 to 20. And so these are going to be very useful um, throughout this section. Hey, then they have a few problems, which we'll do our own in hoc, of squares and square roots, so radicands. Um, approximating some. You have a number 4, less than 5, less than 9. So if you do those two square roots, um, you would get that 2. Perfect square of 4 is 2. Perfect square of 9 is 3. The square root of 5 is between 2 and 3. Okay, so you want to just find perfect square numbers that that number in the middle falls between. And they give you a few examples of this. All right, now when we do Pythagorean theorem, the main thing that you need to make sure you do correctly is label the hypotenuse, which is across from the 90 degree angle. The two other sides are legs. They can be any one. So when you label this, the hypotenuse has to be C. A and B do not matter. It won't make a difference. So normally they have it set up A squared plus B squared equals C squared. They have it C squared equals A squared plus B squared. It's all the same. Okay. We will be solving for any one of these missing values, A, B, or C. So they have some examples of showing you how to manipulate the formula using algebra. And we will just pick up here and hop. Okay. 